the border who is in Nizana. A very good afternoon to you, Mariska. Thank you so much for joining us. Are fires under control? Yes, I, I can confirm that the fires are very much still under control. It's looking very good. Earlier, uh, uh, Fire Chief uh, Reinhard Geldenhuis told us they have a mantra today or a mantra today uh, among the firefighters saying today is the day uh, that they're going to bring this fire under control. Um, but to speak to us a little bit about what's going on in Nizna today and also in the weeks coming, we have the Mayor of Nizna, Eleanor Bowes, and she's briefly going to tell us uh, what the situation is. Mayor, good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining joining us. Um, just briefly, what is the situation with the fires right now? Are they still contained? At this very moment, fires are still contained. And as you said, today is the day, that is my mantra for the day. Today is the best day that we've had in this past for a few days of this fire disaster. At this very moment, as we all know, tomorrow is Monday. People are going to go to their jobs, they're going to get on with their lives. In Nizna it's not going to be the same because people are now sitting with, for instance, young, young kids who don't have school uniform, who don't have a home to go from, go from, and that is where we as the municipality will now come in and we will have to um, communicate that rebuild program to those victims uh, of this fire disaster. At this stage you had to stop your count unfortunately because fires flared up again, over 400 structures destroyed. But you are starting a formal assessment tomorrow. Yes, we are um, con uh, continuing the formal assessment tomorrow. As we've said previously, we are at about 439 only in the epicenter of Neisner. And we believe as we have gone around there are much more. We have a crew who's working on it and in a day they've come up with, with that total. So we are very confident that this process will be wrapped up as quickly as possible because that will allow us to plan properly because we will have the right information and accurate information. In an earlier press briefing you told us a lot of donations are still streaming in. You are very happy about that uh, but you've also created an app where you can verify who needs what and how you can get the right uh, tools or equipment or need to the right people. That is absolutely correct. We had a th team of people who were tirelessly on it for a day and a half. That is now complete. Um, you can access the app um, from our Eisner Municipal Facebook page but you can also access it on your smartphone. That is designed in a way that that gives us as the municipality the accurate information and exactly who lost their property, property partially or completely and what their needs are. And then we will deal with just those people and that data. But of course rebuilding Nisner will take some time. It's not something that will be sorted out in a week. Um, you are absolutely correct, uh, Mariska. We will not be able, we are not unrealistic about it, but what we have realized is we have got a lot of goodwill, great people with expertise in different fields. We will draw all those people in, probably have to put together a great project team to work on it, and then we will really, we would like to see in the first uh, two weeks from now, we would like to see uh, some building starting already, and that is from both categories of people who have been affected during these fires. And maybe just lastly, what are the urgent needs that people can still don donate? At this point I would like to appeal to people that because schools are going to start again, that they focus on school uniform, we will be able to direct them in the right direction in terms to where the need is and in terms of the school uniform and they can obviously uh, make direct contact with these people. But then we need a whole lot of still very warm blankets and bedding, we need mattresses, we need a lot of toiletries because that is things that just goes up very quickly. We would like also people to start looking at home appliances like kettles and irons and those kind of things. And so we appeal to you please. Also very um, sanitary products, you know, we have a lot of frail people who have been displaced, um, adult um, nappies and stuff like that. But um, as I earlier said, building supplies will become the very important next step that we will be coordinating with a team of people and I am planning to meet with builders, businesses and particularly architects and planners and suppliers so that we can together coordinate that with our own department that deals with human settlements. And just lastly, how do they reach you to, to give these don donations? They have to contact the municipalities. Um, communications department they can also reach my office and they will speak to my manager in my office which is Christopher the same note and that is it 044 302 and the reference is it is with regards to the disaster we have a log 
we log everything. We have a joint operations centre and they also log everything that comes in. So by the end of the day when we have our briefing sessions, we know exactly who contacted us, why they contacted us and how we need to get back to them and, and on what we need to get back uh, to them with. That was, of course, the mayor of Neisner, Eleanor, Eleanor Bowes, telling us that they need more donations, building materials and the like. And, of course, tomorrow they will start with a, uh, a, a full assessment of the extent of the damage. Now, if we can just take a moment to show you what it looks like. We are at, on Neisner Heights at the moment. And if you follow the camera, you'll see this is what a lot of the homes look like here on Neisner Heights. Um, they were beautiful mansions, many of them reduced to absolute rubble it's complete devastation here yeah. further down the road you can also see um, beyond the trees that's burnt black um, houses completely gutted and destroyed and we'd also like to show you across the road if we can quickly walk there um, this is the view from Neisner Heights as we walk along the road yeah it's about a 15 meter walk um, and you can see Neisner nestled down below uh, the Neisner Lagoon is also there um, and Neisner Lagoon of course um, uh, uh, goes into the sea here into the Indian Ocean and that's the the view that Neisner is known for is the Neisner heads but where we are standing now that is what's left of the homes that were here and despite the beautiful view it's absolute absolute devastation uh, people have lost absolutely everything earlier today we spoke to a few residents who are very upset and you can hear and you feel it how people are absolutely traumatized by what happened here in Naisna. Um now that the fire is settling down and the smoke is dissipating um, I think trauma is setting into the town and a lot of people are absolutely heartbroken um, so Neisner is going to take some time to heal from this, not only physically and not only rebuilding, but for the people themselves emotionally. Uh, one can only imagine this must be an absolutely devastating time and they will take some time to heal from this. But as uh, the Mayor Eleanor Bosby says, from tomorrow they'll be doing an assessment to get a better idea and understanding just of how far and wide this devastation is and uh, they will have a clearer picture by the end of the week. It is indeed absolute devastation there, but then we'll certainly touch base with you a little later on in the show. Thank you so much for your time. That was Mariska Bota speaking to us live from Neisner.